This is Twit. As we round out this year, we're in our final month of 2021. It's time to take a look back, maybe laugh, maybe cry, maybe do a little bit of um, anger spiraling. In any case, it's time to take a look at the biggest tech fails of 2021. And we have CNET's Roger Chang here to talk to us about those very things. Welcome to the show, Roger. Thanks for having me. Yes, glad to have you here. So, of course, we don't have enough time to cover every single one of these fails, and everybody should head to CNET.com and check out the article. Uh, but let's start with the one that you consider the worst, because, uh, surprise, surprise, I also consider it the worst. Uh, what's the <laughs> biggest tech fail of 2021 that is a repeat of, yes, of years before? Yes, yeah, it's, uh, it's, a, it's a pretty obvious one, and it's, it's misinformation. And I really did wrestle with the top several items if, if you if we as we kind of run down the top three or four they're actually all mm-hmm. kind of interconnected but it really all kind of stems from misinformation as a thing as a problem that has really spiraled out of control the last few years uh, and has really really just sort of hit a peak in in 2021 um, you know between vaccine misinformation between QAnon they're just you know the fact that late night talk show hosts were joking about QAnon as a fringe thing now has become so mainstream, this, this misinformation and the craziness of all of it, it had to be the biggest biggest tech fail. And, and the fact that a lot of this was put out by the big social platforms, big tech companies, it had to be the number one item, it had to be the biggest fail of the year for me. Absolutely. Yes. Um, I, I, as you said, you know, you were kind of concerned that maybe it was uh, that the the top kind of stories were a little bit related. But I do think that misinformation on its own, I mean, if, I don't know about you, but I occasionally have to help out uh, friends and family who come across <laughs> a fake story who are going, wait, is this true? I'm like, okay, let me let me gather the notes so I can tell you why, uh, you know, it, Dr. Calvin is telling you that you should inject <laughs> horse tranquilizer or whatever. Um, I mean, I've had, anyway. it, I've had it worse. My, my, my relatives don't even ask me if this is true or not. They forward it on to me and I, and I look <laughs> at what they forward it on. I'm like, she's like, hey, did you see this? Not as in like vetting. It was more like, please, I shared this with my, all my friends already. Did you see this? <laughs> no. Like, uh, you might want to pull back some of these. I want to be a little bit conservative of how you share your, uh, your emails. And that's really how it happens, right? It's your friends and your family Mm-hmm. Get a hold of this stuff. That's just how big of a problem it is. It's, it's not like, I'm sure it stems from someone. <clears throat> the the original sender probably has some nefarious scheme around this, but really, it gets down. To, it, it affects your family and your friends to the point where that's that's why it's become so dangerous and so effective. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Uh, speaking of dangerous and effective, Facebook also made the list. Excuse me, Meta also made the list. And I was hoping you could talk about, I mean, because this one, there's lots to talk about here. So if you want to give us a rundown of some of the meta I'm, mistakes of the year. Yes. And I, I still have trouble remembering to call it Meta. It's still, it's taking me a little while. Like I, 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 they announced it. I went on my Thanksgiving break and I just forgot about it. And now <laughs> I've got to retrain my brain to say Meta all over again. Uh, you know, it's just, it was, it was just kind of a terrible year. I and mean, we, we talked about misinformation. A lot of the reason why misinform- misinformation has proliferated so much is because of Facebook and Instagram, these various platforms it controls. Uh, there are just uh, there, there's been the Facebook whistleblower, Francis Haugen, talking about how the company has prioritized profits over the toxic nature of the platforms that they run. Um, there's the fact that a lot of this all happened just, just a few weeks back. All these, all the bad news, all the negativity, and then they went out and they did their whole Facebook virtual reality conference event where it looked completely tone deaf and just out of touch with the reality because they talked about the wonders of the metaverse and virtual reality with the backdrop of all these disclosures from the Facebook papers. Um, and it just, it was just a bad year. It's a bad year. Facebook. Yeah. Uh, indeed. Um, and then we had, and I think this is a big one that has multiple pieces to it as well. A lot of these do. Um, the supply chain, because yeah. I think a lot of people may have heard that word for the first time in a long time today. Mm-hmm. The last time they may have heard about it was a little bit surrounding sort of toilet paper uh, and the right. supply chain at that point. But 
now the holiday season is is coming around and people are hoping to get their uh, Veruca salt of a child, the um, <laughs> console they're, you know, whining about and are unable to do so. Yeah. And so tell us about what's going on with the supply chain and why it made the list. Yeah, well, I mean, obviously, it, this is one that I also wrestled with uh, to, whether or not to put this as high as it did. And ultimately, it, it ranked so high because it affects so many people. Uh, you just sort of recall at the beginning of the year the ever given cargo ship that was stuck in the Suez Canal. There were memes about it. People were laughing and joking about it. Well, actually, that was kind of a big deal and, and sort of symbolic of the bigger problems we were having. You know, ironically, as things were really bad in 2020, supply actually held up pretty well. The, the problem is all the impact from last year, the, the things shutting down because of COVID and reopening up, uh, companies not out or not projecting correctly what they actually needed in terms of chips and components, all those rippled over 2021. And as a result, you've got shortages of the most random things. Like I tried to buy tennis balls a few months ago, couldn't buy tennis balls anywhere. Or if you did, they were like three or four times the price. And, and obviously PS5s and the Xbox, uh, are sort of the the big sort of whales when it comes to hard to find products, but you're starting to find just random things, not necessarily toilet paper, but random products being shorted. And, and this holiday season, obviously, uh, that that's kind of exacerbated all of these problems, and you're starting to see. Uh, and while we've been telling people to you know buy early, or if you can help it, you know either make your own gift, buy second hand, uh, don't necessarily rely on supply chain because it is still in the middle of failing you and from what we're hearing, is going to continue to fail or continue to be a, a problem well into 2022. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is uh, one of those watch this space kind of situations because yeah. <laughs> it's not over. Uh, we've got a, we've got a while to go to sort of reclaim uh, the 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 whole process. Uh, yeah. Then we had. I think something that affected many a user in many ways, but may have been sort of stealthy because when your, uh, your favorite social media account isn't loading or your bank app isn't popping up, you tend to think that it's just the local internet connection, that there's something wrong with the router, that there's something wrong there. But uh, there were some big, big, big impactful internet outages that uh, hit people. It hit different this year because of uh, many more people working from home. So tell us about the internet outages of 2021. Yeah, there were there are a number of ones. There, you know, there are, as you said, a number of outages. Oftentimes they're local. You know, we get alerts about outages all the time. Um, but I think back in June, I think the most infamous one was the Fastly outage. This was uh, one that basically took down half the internet, right? Including our site. CNET's site was down. Uh, our interestingly enough, our writer who covered it was able to access the publishing system and publish the story. She just sort of blindly <laughs> did it because the front end, the site actually wasn't <laughs> on. But she published just hoping that someone out there would have an, a local version of CNET that would able be able to that was cached correctly and was able to get it. But um, Fastly was obviously the big one. Uh, Facebook had its own outage that knocked out the entire system, which was pretty unprecedented, right? All Facebook, all of Instagram and WhatsApp, and you know, or not, not WhatsApp, but. And a lot of people made jokes about, you know, having that break from social network. But, you know, we had countries like like India that rely on Facebook for uh, Internet. We have businesses that run rely on Facebook to, to run as their sort of website or their own portal. And so there was actually a, a pretty big impact from some of these outages. And as you said, like more and more people were working from home, more and more people were reliant on the Internet. And so when these things go out, I mean, there's a real kind of life changing aspect to it. So it's definitely one of the big fails. That, uh, that these outages happened and they happened, it lasted so long. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it was so suddenly people were kind of being able to compare notes and that's where it kind of got uh, <laughs> wild. You're going, oh, wait, you too? Oh, this is, this is bigger than we thought. Um, let's see. Let's have you uh, pick a couple more from the list because I don't want I want people to go and check out your uh, article, obviously, and we don't have too much time left. But what are a few more that you want to share with us that were big tech fails of 2021? Yeah, I'll run down the list because I, I will say just the way that this list uh, has evolved over the years. You know, it used to be a lot jokier, a lot 
funny, you know, the product snafus, things that mm-hmm. were flops or, you know, little literal errors, but, um, it's gotten, it's gotten a lot more serious. Uh, it's gotten a lot more worse. Like there, there are things that actually we have to be aware of, right? Like one highlight is I'd like to highlight is T-Mobile, right? T-Mobile, um, you know, great reputation for service, but got hacked once again, and or not hacked, but ha- suffered another massive data breach that exposed the data of what, 54 million people. And that is, what, the fifth hack in three years? And, Whew. you know, that's 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 one of those fails that you look at, you're just like, wow, like, when I'm looking at my wireless service, do I need to, do I need to factor in whether or not uh, the sanctity or the protection of my personal data is, uh, is an issue? And so that's another big one. Um, Robinhood was one that I think there are folks on Reddit who are still angry about when Robinhood <laughs> sort of uh, shut down the ability to buy GameStop when it was in its run. Um, you know, that is uh, th- that was one of those big key moments that you know that really kind of there was already kind of a us against the man type mentality, and when when Robinhood shut down the ability for for folks to buy up GameStop stock, uh, I think that kind of fueled that. That kind of conspiracy theory, and you know, I talked to my reporter who who still covers this and follows the chatter there. And Robert also, you know, suffered his own data breach, right? Which which gave out a lot of personal data. And I asked, like, are people mad about that? They're like, no, no, they're still angry about that that moment back in the beginning of the year. Like, they're still angry about that. They don't care about the data breach, which is potentially more damaging. They care about not being able to buy GameStop stock. So, another big fail. Yes. Um, I, th- that Robin Hood thing, I had no personal interest in it, but it was, as you said, it was kind of interesting uh, seeing how people responded to that and kind of where the power was placed in that way. Um, another, you know, I hesitate to even bring this person up because they get enough attention as is, but when it comes to fails, there sure were quite a few from uh, Mr. Musk this year. If you want to round out things with um, <laughs> Elon here before we say goodbye. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, Elon had he had his ups and downs, right? He, he was on SNL. Um, he's you know by far the wealthiest. Don't remind person in the me. World. Uh, sorry about that. Um, but yeah, <laughs> just you know teasing uh, personal stock sales, which led to Tesla stock tumbling. Um, you know, I, I I don't even want to mention. I barely want to mention that. You know teasing uh, a uh, proposed school in Texas mm-hmm. with a fairly offensive and sexist acronym, um, you know, taking shots at Bernie Sanders, taking shots at, at just random folks. It, it was kind of a, a, a terrible year for, for Elon Musk, especially on Twitter. If you follow the Twitter feed, and we do, obviously we have to t- follow the Twitter feed, um, there, was, there was a lot to dislike there. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I think that's a good way of putting it. There's a lot to dislike there. Uh, <laughs> Well, Roger Chang, thank you so much for joining us today to go through uh, a little bit of your list of the fails of 2021. And it is interesting. When I first clicked on this article, um, I was just doing it because I thought, oh, I'll have a laugh. And then as I got through it, I thought, oh, no, this there's a, you know, it used to be joking about the Amazon Fire Phone, right? But this now right. it's, 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 it was a year of, of some serious things. So uh, we appreciate you putting that list together. Of course, folks can head to CNET.com to check out that list. But if folks want to follow you online, where should they go to do so? They follow me on Twitter at Roger, at Roger W. Chang. Um, and that's probably the best way to get the, the up-to-date updates for me. Awesome. Thanks so much. We appreciate you. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it.